What do you think happens to your ram pump when you're a blaggard and you don't take it out before it freezes? Well, it gets broken. I, we had such a mild winter that I didn't even know if we were gonna have a real winter, but apparently we did have one. And I didn't get my ram pump out and well, there you go. So let's see what we can do about this. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen a ram pump in action, you're not gonna wanna miss this. This is one of the wonders of the world, according to me. It's a pump that you can build yourself that runs off no power, no electricity, no gas, no nothing. It has two moving parts and it runs off kinetic energy and it pumps and pumps and pumps 24 hours a day and it is amazing, amazing. So I've got some check valves here uh, that I used last year and I've always wondered if you could kind of refurbish these or recondition them. I was gonna order some new ones and I thought, well, let me take a look at those and see if I can't refurbish them. Maybe we'll get another summer out of them. All right, this is, this is gonna be great. Let's get started here. So this one's okay. And don't, under, don't worry if you don't understand exactly what this is yet. Stay tuned, I'll, I'll explain it to you. It's really interesting. Uh, but we get, need to replace this one. This piece here is actually, I put that on not very long ago. It's really tight and almost, in, almost new. It doesn't look like it, but it is on the inside. So let's take this off and see if we can't combine it with one of these old ones and uh, get it working again. I just walked back in the shop from meeting the uh, FedEx guy who delivered all of my irrigation stuff. I ordered all my irrigation things, uh, drip irrigation uh, from, from Amazon. That was so much cheaper than uh, where my other supplier was. It was just, it's shockingly uh, cheap and so this here, I gotta get this thing going first so I can get the water tower filled and then I'll be doing the irrigation. So I'll, I'll share that with you as well because I really like drip irrigation. It is, um, it's the best. I am gonna be in the market for a new vise soon. I've had this old six inch Craftsman, well, as long as I can remember. I bought it used on eBay long time ago, right when eBay was first starting out. And it has been a good vice, but I use my vice almost every day and it's just wearing out. So, yeah, see, it's just not, it's just kind of getting loose and a little worn. Okay, so that will go in there. Now let's see, if, let's break into one of these. Well, actually, you know what, this being all broken apart, this really gives a, is a good uh, teacher's aid here. So a swing check valve, I told you that there was two moving parts in a ram pump and that those two moving parts are what they call uh, swing checks. And what a swing check valve does is it, it's basically only allows water to go one way. You don't think of it like a, a dog door that the water comes through here or the dog goes through there and he pushes the door open and then after he's through it slams shut and there's no handle there. Not to mention he doesn't have any opposing thumbs and he's not smart enough to open the door. He can't get back out. So that's a one-way valve. And that is uh, what, what you call a check valve. These would be found in lots of different places. At the, if you have a well, at the bottom of your well, let's say there'll be a, a foot valve or a check valve just like this. Let's say the well would be even hooked right to it. And so if that well has to lift water a long ways and fill up the standpipe, so when it turns on, it will open up the dog door there and water will flow. And then when the pressure switch turns the pump off, this will slam shut. And the nice thing about that is it holds the water right there and the pump doesn't have to refill the standpipe every time it turns on. Saves energy, it saves wear and tear on your pump. Just a simple, clever design that is so valuable in so many different applications. But I was looking at these and they look like they're rebuildable, or at least you can take them apart. There's a little nut there that holds the pin. And what happens to these things, what they, you know, they run, they click, 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 they run 24 hours a day on the ram pump that this brass pin in here wears out and they get so sloppy back and forth that they will no longer seal. If you look at this old one I have here, this is the one that ran all last year. And if you look in here, you'll see that that gate, see how far it swings back and forth? And it, it's so worn that it can actually close, but not close. And what I mean by that is, is you can, water can get past it. Right there, it can get, 
it, if it, it's just, it's worn. It's just all worn out and um, it's not efficient. It'll still work, but it's just not as efficient. So let's pull this apart and see if we can put a new pin in there, tighten that up a little bit, reinstall it and get another year out of it. These are solid brass and so they won't really corrode. Brass is really a, a cool, an, an amazing metal. It, it's a soft metal, so it makes a good bearing surface. Um, and brass is also really good uh, for any type of a place where you're in water, you have corrosion. That's why for years, ships, propellers, um, and prop shafts and rudders have been made out of, of brass because it's impervious to salt water. Ships, bells also, I, I, I've always, I guess the wrong size there, I've always really liked brass. Don't tell me that's got, that's metric. Oh. I guess I'm gonna have no choice than to dust off the hateful metric. Stupid metric. It's just beyond me why anyone would design a measuring system based off logic and science when they could base it off of a proper form of measurement like a barley corn. There we go. I see the problem already. Look at that. Look at that. So, see that pin? Let me focus there. See that pin? It's got the steps in it. It's got, see where it's thinner in the middle there and thicker on the outsides? That's not supposed to be that way. That's just worn from all of the working back and forth, where this has worked back and forth a few, I don't know how many times, maybe millions, maybe thousands, a lot, several times a second for a year. That's worn that out. So that's why it's so sloppy. That's why it's all, it's all uh, wiggly in there. That should be reasonably a good fit. So what I think we'll do is let's take the pin out of the other piece and if it's the same thing, because the other piece doesn't have as much wear in it, let's take a look at it here. So this one froze shortly after I, I replaced it in the pump and it never got much use. You know, look how tight that is. You, see, you know, I mean, compared to the other one, and these are not Formula One engine tolerances, but they are. They, they need to be reasonably, reasonably tight. Shock that out of there. Okay, so you know, we might be able to even use this this flapper. It might. I don't know if the bore is the same size. Nope. No, it's different. It's different. It won't work. It, see, it's got the it's got the two different connection points there. But the pin itself. Look at this pin here. We can see that pin doesn't have doesn't have that those steps in it. It hasn't been worn very much. You know, you could use replace a, you use some brass welding rod that was a little bit thicker diameter. I have a little bit of that, but the stuff that I have has got flux in it. This is brass right here, but it's got that white flux in it. And it's actually smaller, so that's not going to work. But this will work, I think, if it fits through the hole. Oh yeah, it's tight. That's good. That you can uh, put that new pin in. Oh, that's that's just like new. Okay, with that, that's in there nice and tight. That, that'll close. So we need to, this needs, this is going to be under quite a bit of pressure. And so this needs to seal. If you look here, I just noticed this. It looks like there's a, um, like a little Teflon gasket on there. It's probably enough. I'm going to put a little pipe dope on it. That's this stuff here. I like this stuff. Uh, this, you can use this or you can use uh, the Teflon tape that I've used in other stuff. Um, I think this might be a little bit better, but it is a little bit messier. I'm going to show you a trade secret that you're not going to learn in uh, anywhere else than here because it's, well, you probably, yeah, I don't think that I invented it, but I think someone showed me. I don't remember, but I'm going to show you. So all of us from time to time use something in a can like this that's got a brush on it, right? 
and then the, you get so the brush doesn't reach the bottom when things are running out, whether it's glue or primer, whatever it is that you're, you're trying to get at. What you do is you take your hammer and you, you start to collapse the can. Not a lot, just a little bit. It doesn't take very much just like this and it won't destroy the seal or the lid. And now your brush or your dauber, whatever, will reach to the last little bit of stuff at the bottom.